Uh, hello again. My name is Daniel Call. I'm in Tokyo, Japan this evening. Uh, things uh, here in Japan today have been quite scary. Uh, I, actually, I got on a train and I went west of Tokyo today. I got on one of the bullet trains and I had to head out toward Nagoya, which is another big city down the well, down toward the west there, and uh, it was kind of a surreal experience. Um, people anywhere west of Tokyo are really calm. Um, you, you know, if you go anywhere west of Tokyo, you wouldn't even know that anything happened a couple of weeks ago in the northern part of the country. I mean, people are still using electricity like normal. Um, obviously, they're concerned, but they're not overly concerned about radiation levels or anything like that because none of the radiation is getting that far down. Um, but anyway, when I came back to Tokyo this evening, um, you know, uh, again, lights were turned down in a lot of shops. A lot of shops were actually closed today since it was Sunday night when I got back. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit darker than usual. There's uh, fewer people on the trains. Everybody's trying to make sure that they get home in case, you know, there are fewer trains at night and things like that. Um, there have been no blackouts in Tokyo over the last few days because they haven't need to implement the blackouts. People have been working so hard to try to save energy and stuff that um, Tokyo Electric hasn't had to have any blackouts. In fact, I hear tomorrow they're only going to have a blackout in one area instead of five different areas like they have been doing. So it's a good sign. People are, are cooperating. They're helping out a lot in that sense. But um, we did have a very, very scary day here in Tokyo uh, and, well, throughout most of northern Japan because we started uh, getting some very scary sounding numbers out of the Fukushima reactor. Uh, uh, what is it? Tokyo Electric uh, made an announcement earlier and it was posted on NHK and put on the news and everything like that that they had detected in pools of water underneath the reactors that uh, the radiation level was something like 10 million times the normal radiation level for water inside of a reactor. That's a very, very scary figure. And wow, <laughs> you know, everybody heard that and they were glued to their TV for the next five hours. Uh, TEPCO just came out about a half an hour ago and made another announcement saying that they may have screwed up their initial calculations and it's not as, not quite that high. That's, but that's still not very encouraging because, you know, it's still way high. Um, and they, they were trying to break it down into uh, uh, iodine-131, which has a half-life of, what, eight days, and then uh, uh, iodine-134, which has a, a half-life of 30, I'm sorry, 53 minutes here or something like that. But then they started talking about cesium. There may be some cesium in here. And some people have even postulated that there might be some plutonium in this. Now, when they start talking about these other elements, people start getting really scared. Uh, so what they've done is they've sent uh, soil samples and water samples out to outside labs so that they can get them checked independently. And it'll probably, I don't know how long it'll take, but it'll take a couple of days probably, at least before we get some real numbers and, and get a real breakdown as to what is in that water. Um, Tokyo Electric announced again earlier that they... Uh, are trying to figure out the best way to deal with this situation. The radiation level is so high that they uh, they really don't want to send their workers in there. Um, that's understandable, but of course, you know, what are you going to do about the situation if you can't put people in there, right? Um, so this is something that a lot of Japanese people are screaming about today. It's like, well, come on, tell us what you're going to do. But they're kind of taking their time with the decision-making process here uh, for inexplicable reasons. Um, I, I just... You know, I don't know. I really don't know. They they did have a couple of guys who stepped into these pools of water a couple of days ago. You probably heard about it. And they got some radiation burns on their legs because they weren't wearing long boots. Who knows why they weren't wearing long boots? This is just, uh, you know. But uh, fortunately, I've heard that they, uh, they're they going to be okay. Um, as a matter of fact, one of them, I believe, was released from the uh, hospital earlier today, which is which is good news, you know. I'm sure he's going to have to do some outpatient, uh, outpatient treatment and stuff like that. But anyway, the uh, the situation there is pretty scary. Uh, 
on the on the bright side, the uh, rescue efforts up in the northern part of Japan are proceeding quite rapidly right now. They've finally been able to get phone service into the hardest hit areas. They've got uh, cell phone service in those areas. Uh, they've restored electricity and gas to major parts of Sendai, which is the biggest city in that part of Japan. Um, you know, things are slowly but surely coming online. Um, the areas along the coast are still just really terrible. I mean, they've, they've gotten communications and they've gotten some roads into there and stuff like that. And uh, relief supplies are reaching the people in the evacuation centers and such. But we still have, uh, you know, somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 people um, missing at this point. And nobody seems to know where they are. They find them sort of like one at a time. Uh, so it's going to be a long process, and it's it's grim. It's not a fun situation at all. Uh, but they're working hard. Um, a lot of people, superhuman efforts are going on up there. Volunteers, firemen, uh, cops. There's a lot of cops even from Tokyo going up there to help out as best they can. Military, you, both U.S. and Japanese are, are you know you, doing doing whatever they can to help. Um, obviously it's still very cold up there. We need a lot of, we still need a lot of kerosene up there. Um, I'm getting reports of gasoline shortages, even in the inland areas, because all their gasoline was sent, you know, toward the coast. And so people are like sleeping in their offices or, you know, they they have to plan ahead to buy gasoline in certain cities that uh, have gas, you know, like they have to make a reservation at the gas station. Never heard that one before, but Things are, are happening. They're, they're, they're moving along up there. It's, uh, it's still going to be a long process. So anyway, the reason I made this, this thing today, again, is uh, just to follow up. You know, you're going you're gonna to turn on your TV tomorrow. You're going to pick up your newspaper, and you're probably going to see some really fantastic stories again. Um, for example, we, we, were, we heard a rumor about one story about, about looting. Looting. Now, looting is a very loaded word. Um, when you... You know, what do you think of when you think of looting? Okay, looting is somebody busting up a an electronic store and walking away with a 54-inch television. That's my image of looting. Um, that's not what that's not what's happening up there. Nobody's busting into electronic stores. What they're doing is, I've heard stories again about people in the most desperate areas uh, who have broken into like convenience stores or supermarkets because they haven't eaten in a week. And they walked in, you know, grabbed some food that was lying around on the ground, and they left without paying. That's what's happening here, okay? Looting is a loaded word. Be careful of words like that. Be careful of words like panic in Tokyo. It's not happening. It, um, you know, just be, be, be beware over-exaggeration of some of this stuff. Um, keep it all in perspective. I think uh, the Japanese are going to get over this. It's going to be a hard, it's going to be a long, hard slog, but I think they're going to make it. They're they're pretty tough people. So anyway, please continue to uh, think of Japan and pray for Japan. Thank you very much.